Welcome to Championship Culture. We got a, a special guest with us tonight. Russell Dove is the head football coach and AD at South Columbus High School in North Carolina. Uh, Russell is one of the most respected uh, guys, coaches around. Uh, probably known as one of the best, just best dudes in the business. He's uh, loved and liked and loved by uh, by coaches and kids. Uh, he is uh, extremely detailed, extremely organized. He's a great weight room guy. He's ex super consistent. I'd say he's Mr. Consistency. And he's a great family man on top of that. So, Russell, man, I appreciate you doing this. And I, I really want you to uh, – I really want to learn from you because you, you do you do uh, some things just better than I've ever seen anyone do them before as far as just being genuine and straightforward and and – you can you got the ability to be straightforward and still everyone loves you. So so you got you got magic dust on you there. So I'm I just want hey. you to talk, man. But thanks for being on here. Man, I appreciate it, Joe. And it's so good to get to talk with you and see you. And, and uh, we love talking about football. You know, we both love Christ uh, and we both love our families. And you know, that's 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 a lot to talk about there. And you know, even though I don't consider them in those orders, but I really appreciate the privilege for. Those who are going to take a chance to listen to me, uh, I don't know any more than anybody else. I never claim to be. I'm not. I'm not a great coach. I am just a coach, and just uh, I'm humbled to be able to talk to you and and be where I'm at. Well, so. I, I think you are a great coach, and I, I'm super excited about having you on here. I mean, we're going to jump right into the questions. Like yep. I said, man, anything that gets your pee hot, talk as long as you want about it. So, question number one: Can you give a one minute ele elevator introduction of yourself? Okay, my name is Russell Dove. Uh, I'm the head football coach and athletic director at South Columbus High School. Uh, I've been an athletic director for over two years now. Uh, this will be my fifth season at South Columbus. Uh, I am uh, married. I am a uh, married to uh, Billy. I have two sons, Alex and Cole, which I love very much. I'm a very big family man. My family always comes first. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a Christian. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, I, I love Christ. Uh, he died for me. He saved me uh, because my life is worth nothing without him. Um, and, and my kids know it. Uh, my football players know it. Uh, they've been pulled in many a times for us to play with them. Love it. Um, I, I went to Blamer High School when I was young. It's no longer. It's, it's a middle school now. One of the best places to absolutely experience high school or sports. Uh, you know, we were always good in football, basketball, baseball. I was a three-sport guy. Um, I played football at Elon College for a couple years. Um, I was always an overachiever. I had to work a little harder than everybody else did. Uh, and uh, but but I think that's what builds us and molds us as we grow. Um, uh, I grew up on a farm, uh, so that's where I get my work ethic from. Uh, tobacco, uh, that was it during the summers. Tobacco, it was it was football, basketball, baseball, tobacco, and it never changed. Uh, uh, didn't get a break. So uh, that's pretty much a little insight to me, and uh, nothing great, but uh, that's who I am. I, I tell you, uh, we were talking about it beforehand. This this COVID break, you got you got that awesome beard, and you got jacked Ooh. up in the weight room, man. I can tell just by looking at you. You've been in that weight room. All right. Uh, question number two. And, you know, in, in culture, you know that's the new buzzword. But yeah. yeah, what? How do you define culture in your program? Man, there, there are so many people that can, can do it uh, better uh, enunciating and, and all these key terms and all this, but I use it with a verse. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so does one person to another. So uh, with me, uh, character is everything. You know, it's not uh, what you do that's important, it's how you do it. So uh, with me, who you surround yourself with, the way you do things, the way you carry yourself, the way you treat people, you know? For me, walking up down the hall, for my kids, when my kids, you know, I'm the role model. How do I treat others? When I walk down the hall, that janitor, you know, that lady sweeping the floor, that secretary, I treat them the same as anybody else. I tell my kids that because you know why? Um, that's important because that's somebody's mother. That may be your grandmother. That may be your daughter sitting there one day, okay? And my life is not any more valuable than theirs is. So for me, you know, uh, character and culture starts by who you surround yourself with, the kids in your program, the coaches in your program. You know, because sometimes we're not always – we don't always get to pick and choose who our coaches are. So, you know, not only are you teaching and bringing up kids, you're also teaching and, and bringing up coaches, you know. So – and I love a family atmosphere, and I love to get after it. So, 
I love co- – and right now we've got one of the best coaching staffs I think we've had since my first year there, believe it or not. And it's a tight-knit crew, and we back each other up. Um, you know, and, and the funny thing when you talk about culture, you know, culture is one of those things that shows up when everything else seems to be falling apart, okay, because the kids respond to it, the coaches respond to it. Um, you know, culture is also, you know, representing uh, not just yourself, Culture is representing your school, your team, your teammates, your community, especially down where I'm at, South Columbus. And I always tell the kids that, you know, whatever you do, wherever you go, you know, you're representing the school, the team, you know, that that community, because that community travels well, and football there's a big deal. Um, And, and, you know, for me, I'll I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, You know, your culture and the way kids behave and norms. And uh, uh, we went down to a 7-on-7 last summer at Dillon. And, and I'm saying it's not for me because it's nothing to do, you know, and, and it's, it's these kids. We're going to set up for, for a 7 on 7. Uh, after the 7 on 7, they're like, hey, coach, if you'll take your team up to the cafeteria, you know, we'll feed you. You know, my kids are like, hey, that's, that's great, coach. Can we go? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, what are they having? You know, chicken. Okay. So we go up in there, you know, a lot of kids in there and stuff. And uh, when all our kids went and sat down and stuff and I was coming through and I was over sitting down to eat, you know, it'd been a hot day. You've been battling and working. And uh, the head cafeteria lady comes up to me. She said, coach, I just want to tell you, she said, your boys were some of the most respectful young men we've ever had come in this place. And it just really made the hair on the back of my neck stand up because, you know, we want them to be good young men. We want them to treat everybody with respect. Thank you. Yes, man, do those things. But, you know, there's also community and that school, you know, it, 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 it formulates that, those young men. So, for me, uh, character is that. Um, we want our kids not just to be good men, we want to be good fathers. I keep saying that a lot. Not just men, fathers. Because right now, in America, 20%, 20% of our kids grow up without a father, you know? So, for me, that's big. I can't imagine my kids growing up without me, you know? Not to say that a single mom can't do it. Okay, but for me, that's that's huge. Uh, but for our kids, you know, character, the integrity, you know, uh, uh, being humble about yourself, those those traits uh, just really carry so much. Buddy, I, I've never heard you verbalize that before, but, you know, I, I we got to spend a year together, and I tell yeah, you what, you, you live it. I mean, everything you just said, <laughs> As you were saying, I was, I was like checking it off in my, my head. Yeah, that's, that's right. Russell. That's Russell. That's Russell. <laughs> so I, I wish more people watching this got to know you more because literally everything you've said so far is exactly how you live it. And that's, uh, you know, and that's what's most important, man. And that's, uh, you're, you're and very impressive. All right. So uh, number three. All right. So now, you told us what you want to see. Now tell us how you create it. So number three, what are the three best things you do to build culture in your program? Well, let me say this first, but before I start with that, uh, the, the culture at South Columbus w- was built before I was there. Okay. And what I mean by that is that toughness that's there, uh, you know, that black hat mentality, you put that black hat on that something, you know, that was, you know, coach Holly, coach price, coach Vomble, those guys that come before me, you know, so really with me, uh, it, it was, you know, coming back in there and getting those wheels back on. But it's not, you know, and when I say me, it's not me, it's we, you know, it's us. Getting those wheels back on the program. And, man, it was, it was a challenge, but, man, it was fun. It was so much fun. Um, and, and everything that we do uh, starts in the weight room. It is built from the weight room. Uh, I remember like, you know, there's always, every coach I work with, there's things they say, I remember, I always remember you, you know, that was, that's your leadership lab in that way. And I, and, and I can't say it, you can't say it any better because that's where you experiment. That's where you, you bring them through the tough days. That's where you get to see them in the good days. Uh, that's where you, you sweat, you know, even a blood sometimes, you, you see a little blood sometimes. Um, that, that's, <laughs> it is. Uh, and, and that's, that's where it's built. So for us, it, it's that, you know, getting in push-ups when that, that word comes out your mouth, you know, and not just holding those kids accountable. That's, that's holding the coaches accountable too. You know, we're not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm an imperfect Christian. So, you know, if, if, if 
I've got one of them days and, and I ain't got it right, then I'm going to get my push-ups, you know, uh, because like I said, I'm not perfect by any means. I never have, never will be. Um, what we what we do have a couple different things, Coach, that we do. Uh, there's many things there. Um, you know, we do our Friday night lights uh, is really huge for us because it's not just a scrimmage, Coach. Our Friday night lights, um, and, and, and bear with me because there's so much to go on. We take that Friday night as an inner squad scrimmage, but we do so much more. We do, uh, you know, my first year there, we come in there and we were going to do, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cover dish, you know, which was great. Uh, we started off with two tables. Last year, we lined up seven tables worth of food, seven tables. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head. And, you know, when you got there, it's one of those things where everybody's like, I don't know if it's going to, you coach, you might want to order some pizzas. And I'm like, no, nah, they'll take care of it. You know, hey, learn well, learn well. Um, but we bring our booster club in. Our booster club in that night. I tell the kids, I don't care who you bring. Bring your family. Bring your uncle. Bring. I want them all in there. I want them all in that cafeteria, you know. And it is jam-packed, you know. And it's an opportunity, you know, not only for them to get to meet the kids, for them to get to meet the coaches, the administration. And the booster club does passes that night. They do T-shirts. We have our little kids' football sign-ups out there under the lights. Uh, our midget league comes, our recreation department comes in. We do sign-ups there. Uh, there, there is so much stuff that, that uh, goes on on there, and, and it's really a special night, and there's so many more things that we want to do with it, but um, I think that's something that's kind of special that our kids look forward to, and I'll tell you a story. Two years ago, our lights in our stadium went out, <laughs> so we're sitting there, the kids are ready to go, and we're like, oh, man, no, not this, not this, um, but anyway, uh, what happened is we we had a, a, a gentleman, Mr. Brandon Cox, did. He works for Air, Hair. I, people make fun of me. I can't say it right. Hair construction. Hair, her, hair. Uh, great guy. They go bring up two construction lights, the big construction lights. You know, they put it the, where they're working on the highway. They bring two of those out to the practice field. So we move everybody down to the practice, all the fans, everybody. And everybody is like sideline tie. And you want to talk about just getting up in it. And I was like, we need to do it like this every year because they were on the sidelines and that's smacking people, hitting and tackling. And, and it was, it was so exciting. People still talk about that. And it, it, it's amazing. Um, so I think that's one of the things we do. Um, we, we've got a thing we call uh, plug one mentality, Joe. Um, like I said, there's a lot of things we talk about, but I want to kind of hit a couple of different things. You know, we talk about something we do with the team and community, uh, the plus one mentality. Um, that is our weight room. And basically what, what we push with that plus one mentality is outwork everybody inside, okay? That has to do uh, not only with our conditioning, that's with our team, uh, that's when we're doing anything, push-ups, heels, anything, it's plus one. One more, that's all we need, one more. That plus one, it doesn't mean just one, it might mean 10, it might mean two, you know? And for me, I've got some little bands coming, you know, I, I wear my bands as I am second, you know, because I, I need stuff to remind me, because sometimes I need to, Check yourself now. Calm down. Uh, plus one mentality, and you'll hear the kids, like on Tuesdays. When we get done on Tuesdays, we'll practice. So it's something that, that, that's, that's in, in, in our system. When we go to run heels, I've got a heel. I, I've got me a heel now, and I love it. Tuesdays is heel days. So I, at the end of practice, I give them a quick speech, and it's like, to the heels. I'll holler to the heels. The kid, and they love it. They know it's tough, but they love it. They, they run over there. They get ready. Coach Johnson. Uh, lines them up, he runs it, and we get done. Coach plus one, plus one, and if it ain't right, we'll you know they'll say plus one again. They'll run it again, and it, it's absolutely amazing to see because when you take it with a kid and teach it, look here, we're not just doing this to have you do more. We want you in the mindset that if I have to do one more, it's not a big deal. If I've got to do ten more, it's not a big deal. If I've got three minutes left going that game, my my thighs are burning. My shoulders are burning. It's not a big deal. A hey, plus one, plus one. So uh, we do that, and and we tie it. We tie it to some different groups, um, and we call. We, we've got four different things we call it. We've got what's called our elite guy, our uncommon guy, our common guy, and our bare minimum guy. This was something I just picked. I just picked up, and I tied it to this thing, you know. And and I'm sitting here. I read this thing, but basically. You know, you know, and, and you'll hear our kids say it. He's a he's bare minimum today, coach. So they're on their tails when they're not putting out. He's bare minimum, coach. You know, and those kids get it. And it's not embarrassing, but new kids are like, no, I'm not. You know, so it's it's like a challenge. Um, 
you know, the, your bare minimum guys, and, and I'll read it, it says, you know, he only attends mandatory practices. He just does the minimum. So he always got an excuse. What we want him to be, you know, is an elite guy. That elite guy, he don't just do everything right. Man, he's going to bring people with him. You know what I mean? Some days he might bring the coach with him. You know, he, he's the one that's going to be out there. And I remember Travis used to talk about uh, – uh, Travis played a good friend of mine over at West Blade used to talk about Raul Purdy. And, and Raul would get upset when they didn't have practice. And he'd be in there in the coach's office and he's like, why ain't we having practice today? You know, you doing it. That's all I – you know, and, and it was it was so great uh, uh, to see that. So – our plus one mentality has been a really big thing in our program. Uh, we've even got it in our T-shirts now. So it, it, it's not that it's uh, some something new that's been created, but it works for us. It really works for us. What, what, what was the middle? You got the elite and you got the bare minimum. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you got bare minimum guy. You got your common guy. He gets extra work when he feels good, you know, when he feels bad, you know, and, and he works hard. You know, you know it's that guy that, that, that works hard when you, you know, when you're winning. And then if you lose, then he comes in Monday, you got the sad face, uh, you know. And then you got your uncommon guy. That's the guy that does everything. Uh, he does it, you know, like you want it. He understands everything. He's totally invested. But, you know, and that's great for him. But how do we get him to grab his partner over here? You know, like, like us in the weight room. I'll pair guys up that just – do not like each other. I, I am just, it cuts down on the chatter and it really gets a lot of focus. Uh, uh, so I, I do that quite often. Uh, I remember a kid, Gunnar McPherson, and uh, I, I can't remember the kid's name, but my first year I put him in there and man, they got the fight last year and a lot of stuff was said, you know, and uh, anyway, they two setting that thing that whole semester and I'm like, you're going to stay there. And I said, you guys are going to learn to get along. And they did. But not a problem. So, uh, but that's workforce. Um, uh, uh, something else, you know, um, not only we, we're trying not lights, but we, we have a, a gentleman, Joe, that comes in, uh, Mr. Kirk Nobles. Mr. Kirk Nobles is a bear of a man, uh, and he loves the Lord. Holy cow. Uh, he pulls trucks. You know, people have seen him. I mean, this man pulls – this man is 62 years old, and he's pulling transfer trucks. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, I love to lift, but uh, – and some of our guys, he has a workout system. You know, they'll – you know, if they need some place to lift, you know, they'll go over there, you know. And, and uh, he loves it because it's a chance for him to share the word. So uh, he does that. And, and this was done uh, prior to me getting there. And so I want to share this because it just shows you some of the culture that's there, you know, because we all bring our peace to it. And then at every place, there's always things there that are just like, man, the first time that I sat in there and we went through it, man, I just, I was ready to run through the wall now. And it was amazing because, um, you know, we come in there, I do my little speech. We sit down, man, we've got food over there waiting for the kids to eat. You know, these parents, we, you know, our parents sign up, they take care of these kids so well. Uh, um, it's almost too, you know, sometimes too much food. And Mr. Kirk comes in, he's got, he's got his old Bible. He puts it down. He comes in, he'll tell him, you know, stand to your feet. You know, he, he'll get them up and, you know, the stallions, are you ready for the word? And it's like, I was, and then the kids will have to say like, I was born ready, who, you know, and they're shouting, you know, like an army. And it's like, oh my gosh, I get here, here you know, just, we love it. So, you know, he goes there, he sits down, he shares his verse. He goes through, and you know he does a really good job at relating to 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 our kids and what's going on. And he always really tries to find something from the week before to the end. Um, you know, when we're done, uh, uh, and he he picked this up from the the movie Three Hundred. You know, we all love the movie Three Hundred. You know, Three Hundred against a million. You know, it's this. Oh yeah, let's go. We're ready. You know, so uh, um, at the end, you know, he'll tell them to stand to their feet. You know, so. And, and us coaches sitting there, and we read it because we get, we, we get as much out of it with the word and what he does, you know. And he doesn't want any glory for it. He does it. He loves it. Uh, and he'll say, stand to your feet, you know. And it's like, who are we, stallions? What is our profession? And it's who, who, who. Now, in the movie, they go war, war, war. But, you know, we just go who, who, who. You know, so it's it's kind of exciting. And it just takes into the whole game night of, of, of being a stallion and, uh, you, you know, you, you got the horses out there. We got the cannon firing, and you know, after the game, the community comes in, and it's it, it's really something that you try to add little pieces and takes two, but it's it's something that was created before you were there, 
and it's my job to make it better and even keep it going further than what it is. When when does Kirk come in? Is that pregame on game day? That is that is pregame meal. He comes in and does that. Now what he does is you know me and him talk. You know he he might grab a bite because he works too, uh, and then he'll leave and Mr. Kirk comes in uh, right before the game, and as the coaches are heading the sideline, he he and, and I don't, you know, I don't have to do, but but I want him to do this. He he meets him at the goalpost, you know. He 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 gives him a little pep, and he says the Lord's prayer with him, and you know they start playing back in black, and we're off to the races, you know. So, uh, it really, oh man, I mean, if you're a football coach, I mean, it's just me talking about. It, I get excited talking about. It, so, uh, but but you know, really, our our kids and and our culture and these kids work so hard, Joe. When I say it, uh, these kids come in. Uh, I can't tell you the last day I didn't have a kid work out. I mean, you know, injuries, I, I, it's a place where I almost, because we've driven it so hard that we have to like pull the kid out. Listen, you know, we, we need to make an adjustment here. You know, not that we're going to, we need to adjust. You know, we need to alter what we're doing, you know, and we have to pull them out like it because they won't. You know, it's just a, it's a great mentality. It's, it's been built up, and we're, we're so excited to be a part of it. Uh, and, you know, just sitting here thinking and talking about that, um, I go back to my coaches in high school. You know, uh, Coach Jake Smith, you know, played for him for a long time. Coach Nance, uh, you know, Travis, and they're good, really good friends, Travis. But, and we had those same coaches. And Coach Smith was a preparer, you know, a very smart coach. Uh, and Coach Nance was the one that, you know, he, he, he brings the fire. And I know that's where we get it from, you know. Uh, so, you know, I give credit to those two men along with a lot of others. And uh, so I didn't want to talk too much. But those are some of the things we do, plus one mentality. Our Friday night lights, Joe, I could sit here for probably two hours and tell you all the little stuff we do. You know, uh, Coach Johnson devising up our groups. We, we have a seven we have a seven group deal where we have chores these kids do. That's everything. You know, you, you got your sweeping lockers. Uh, uh, you know, but they, they pick up pylons and stuff after the ball game. They pick up the yard numbers. My managers don't. They pick this stuff up from cleaning the buses to taking trash out of the weight room during the day. We give them chores. I had one of my kids tell to him, he said, Coach, my mama don't make me sweep the floor. I said, well, you're going to sweep my floor. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> I always love it. Well, I'm not your mama, son. <laughs> but, I tell you, I love everything. Except when you said uh, blood in the weight room, because I remember <laughs> a bad incident. <laughs> oh, man. We had some blood was... in the incident, and I almost fainted. Thank God you were there, because I was, I was about to faint. <laughs> I was talking to Coach Johnson about that today. We had a kid. We were teaching him RDLs, and he, and he, he had those little, you know, he, he skinned his shins. I'm like, man, you tell you had a good day at RDLs because you skinned your shins. And I was like, I was like, man, you know, I'm going on here tonight. And I said – I remember this one time. I said, Coach Shouse and they were jumping on the plyometric box, and Brooke busted her shin. And I said, Coach, about passed out. <laughs> I just about went down. <laughs> Thank God you were there, because <laughs> they would have to have two ambulances. <laughs> all yeah, right. Well, I, I eventually had to, we we eventually had to go chop all the plyometric boxes and get rid of them because they had a oh, couple. Yeah, of them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last day for them boxes. They were out of there. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. You said that. All right. Uh, number four. This is probably going to be a good one for you. What do you, What do you know oh, yeah. now that you wish you knew when you first got started? Oh well, I wish I knew how much work was being. Head coach. But but really, uh, I wish I knew what it what it took at the time to be a head coach. Um, I've been assistant to some really great guys. You you know, great coaches yourself, Coach uh, Raymond Marlowe. Uh, Coach Pat Bird, I mean, you know, uh, my first started Coach Brigman and, and other guys, you know, being around, you know, Coach Pate, being around Coach Ricky Young, you know, he, he was up at Richmond County, you know, super, just a, a great baseball coach, you know, and everybody thinks football, it's not just football, but I wish I'd have known because where, where I've grown and where I've learned is with Coach Johnson, who worked for me, Coach Scott Johnson, who's, Scott has traveled around. He was the baseball coach at Southeastern, Southeastern Community College, you know, for a lot of years. Man, took them to the World Series out west. And coach is just a stalwart, you know. Uh, you know, he, he's a he's a he's one of my best friends. And uh, 
he's helped me to to understand because he's been a head coach. He's like, Coach, my job for you is to take care of the things that you don't need to take care of is the way he puts it. So I wish, you know, because I always did fields and I always tried to take care of that weight room, but I wish there was more stuff that I would have done to help my head coaches to be better. You know, I, I wish I could have done that. But those are things you don't know, you know, and, and you learn as you go. So uh, I, I wish I could have been a little better with that. But that's just me. I, I, I want to learn. That's why I, I keep watching podcasts. That's why we talk. And that's why we're here tonight, you know, is to try to learn. And everybody's got their style. Everybody's got their way that they do things, you know. And you got to do what's best for you. Uh, I, re I remember uh, after you left going to Wofford, I went to a Wofford clinic or a Coach Lane. Man, it was a great clinic. Triple option, everything. Uh, uh, Chris Williams went with me, Matt Hill. We went up there, man, we were putting in the triple option. And we stayed there for three days, and we come back home. I was in the car 10 minutes. We stopped at Bojangles. I said, guys, you know what I learned, I learned from this clinic? What, Coach? I said, we can't run this. <laughs> I said, this is not for us. <laughs> we said, Tony paid for it. We spent three days up there, and I'm like, we can't do this. <laughs> and I'm not like that, but I'm just like, this ain't happening. <laughs> and it weren't the kids. It was me. I was like, I can't call this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I'm a wing T guy. We are what we are, but, uh, uh, any head coach that I had that, that, that uh, you know, I say, I wish I could have been a better man and a better coach than what I was at the time. And, and I appreciate my, it makes me appreciate my assistant coaches even more now. That's a, that's a great answer. And that, and that's your your uh, your first wise decision as a head coach is you can't go to a clinic and bring all that crap home. <laughs> it don't work the way it works for them. And that's right. and, uh, it looks, yeah, it looks you're good. A, you're a, a true wing T guy, and uh, oh, yeah. and you got to be who you are, man. Because there's a lot of ways to win, but you got to pick your way. <laughs> I feel comfortable what I do, and I love all offense. I love yours. I love the triple option, but you got to call what you're comfortable with and what you know. And I'm and I'm the same. I I love wing T and I love flex bone, but I can't I can't do that. <laughs> all right, uh, number five is uh, what is your contact info or best way to get up with you if guys want to you know ask you questions. I'm sure that someone wants to ask you about that Friday night light deal. And then sure. anything you want to promote or anything you want to say at the end, kind of your time. Yep. No, uh, guys, uh, I'm easy. My cell phone number is 910-234-5764. I, I really don't have a Twitter handle. I probably should. I should. Uh, that's my, my lack of technology. Uh, I'm easy to get up with email. It's grdove, Grady Russell Dove, just grdove at columbus.k12. You know, we all know that, dot, uh, nc .us. Um, you're welcome to come anytime. Uh, anytime I've got a practice, you're welcome to come because uh, as much as some may like to watch us practice or like to come in the weight room, because I, I love people to walk in the weight room because uh, uh, I think we're, <laughs> we all think we do this good or we do that good. But when you see somebody do it good, you're like, that's why I came. So, and we learn from that. So, uh, me and you used to talk about that a lot. You think you do it good until you see somebody do it good, and then you know you can be better. But uh, anything I can ever do to help, uh, I'm easy to get up with. You know, just contact me. Be glad to help in any way I can. Uh, uh, but last thing I'll say is uh, love your kids. Take care of your kids. Treat them like your own. Uh, you'll never have any problems with them. And uh, I appreciate the time, Coach, and, and allow me to get on here and spew my little two cents worth. Uh, uh, I love football. I love the Lord, and I love my family. And uh, I appreciate the coaching family circle we have that we work with. I tell you, I think, uh, you know, I, I was saying at the beginning, you got the magic dust, the, the nice guy. Magic dust. But I think, I think that's what it is, is I think those kids, they do feel like you treat them like they're your sons. And I, and I think that's like the, the highest compliment is when a, when a kid feels that you love them, man, they'll, man. they'll, they'll fight to the death for you. And that's yeah. it. And we always say it, you know, when a kid comes back, you always want kids. We always say we want kids to come back. They might, re they'll remember a couple little phrases or a funny incident or two, but when they come around you and that smile goes on their face and they want a hug or something, you know, it's like they remember that. They won't remember your words. They'll remember how they felt when they were around you. So uh, I'm sure there's a couple that don't want to remember <laughs> how they felt when they were around us, but uh, yeah, a lot of them do. And uh, it, I think most of yours do, man. I think that that is uh, probably the best, the, 
I mean, you were always such a detail organized guy and always did a great job in the weight room. I do want to come see your weight room, but always a great job in the weight room. But kids felt the love that you had for them and they felt like your sons. And I, and I think that's the magic of Russell Dove. And uh, I'm glad we did this because that just reminded me that that really was, that's what, that was the, the, the magic for you is they could feel it, that you loved them and they could feel that you loved them. Well, Coach, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, we, we do, we care about stuff. And we want, like I said, we want to be good men. We want them to be good fathers and, and uh, anything that, that we can do. Uh, you know, just like today, you know, we had two kids call me. We started at 245. We were doing a little lifting after school. And one's here, one there. And I'm like, let me go get them. You know, you go get them. And, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's what dads do because they need to be there. Right now, they need to be there. And they need us more than ever right now. And, yeah, they're not doing the best. Some of them are. Some of them are lazy. You know, we you know, we've all gotten a little lazy, but uh, 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 we're 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 in this for a reason, and uh, I'm I'm glad we get to do what we do. And uh, I couldn't do it uh, um, by myself, like I said, with my coaches. And uh, I thank uh, the Lord above for for blessing me with what I do and the ability to do it. Well, you did a great job on this thing, man. I appreciate you being on here. This thing will. I appreciate you. It'll come out on Saturday, Saturday morning. Okay, okay, good, good. That sounds great, Joe. It's always good to see you, Coach. Man, you you always did a phenomenal job, man. I mean, you you come on detail. No, your your detail, your detail. So, uh, uh, you, you you learn it, you learn it from the good ones. Well, I, I'm 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 remembering some of them stories now, so I, I better I better sign off before we start. It's talking time. About it's, time it's, it's time to get off before we start talking about Coach Kane. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks a lot for being on. Thank you, Jeff. Take care. Hold on.